Boachi was on, uh, my good friend Boachi Jacko, he was on, uh, on radio yesterday and he said something that sort of uh, got everybody talking. Uh, I think that he explained situations relating to how his exit, uh, the, uh, exit out of office uh, occurred. Uh, that we're not going to go into that. But he says something. He says something about he does not trust the president, something like that. And it looks like that has become fodder for the opposition. It's become ammunition for the NDC, and they're using it. And uh, we want to just make a certain statement on it. We said in the VL that Boachi may have shot himself in the foot. We want a certain kind of uh, atmosphere in the future as people compete for presidential elections. And tonight, we are interviewing a, pe a person who potentially could be a presidential candidate as well. Uh, so we, we think that going forward, it is better for presidential candidates to tell us what they want to do. Both NDC and MPP, uh, instead of giving ammunition one way or the other to the opponents, whether you're NDC or MPP, and that's why I like what Dr. Dufour is sort of doing. He's focusing on his Ahuta project. He's not taking, saying anything about President Mahama. He's focusing on the Ahuta project and telling the NDC faithfuls that he will be there for them. Okay. Now, Bochy said that I don't trust Now, that, that's, that's, that's a no point. What, what's the point? So you, you, cannot, you can decide not to trust him. You have had a 47-year relationship with him. We have not had a 47-year relationship with him. You have had a 47-year relationship with him. If you say you don't trust him, that's okay. But is that the reason why we should vote for you as the MPP presidential candidate? That, that really shouldn't come into the question. Unless one has an agenda to damage. And that's where the problem is coming from. You see, as human beings, and I'm, I'm talking about this all the way into the, the, the big story that we have been telling you about on Good Evening Ghana. What we have been trying to do on Good Evening Ghana over the last one year is to tell our people, our viewers, and hopefully they can spread it to the Ghanaian people, that the way a society is developed, the way a society is organized, if you read all the beginning of the European society, how it was organized, is to have a superstructure in the laws such that we, we do not rely on good men and good women. We just rely on the laws. And I'll give you a few examples. Today, we are talking about the National Cathedral, isn't it? Now, my support for the National Cathedral is, is a, a, a subjective one. I've already made that point already. It's a subjective one. It's a spiritual base. So that's subjective. I'm just edging it on my viewers, especially young people, that they join me in that subjectivity. But they don't have to. We have seen the conversation about the cathedral lead us to parliament, where MPs are now demanding that a certain amount of money was paid to the cathedral that did not come through parliament. How are MPs able to demand that? Because we put it in the law that before we do this and that, parliament must know it. We fix the superstructure. So what we have been doing over the last two and a half years is to tell our viewers that until we focus on fixing the superstructure, no good man or good woman is going to emerge to build our society in the way that we want it to be built. Two weeks ago, the British people were watching when their prime minister subjected him, his, himself to a vote of confidence from his own party. How were they able to do that? They put it in the superstructure. Are there other countries who might want to do that at some point in our own political history in Ghana? Have we had other presidents that we wish that we could have subjected them to a vote of no confidence at some point in the middle of their tenure? The answer may be yes. If the answer is yes, could we do it? We, we couldn't because it is not in the law. So all what we have been saying for the longest time is that let's build a certain constitution, that's a superstructure, that allows things to happen the way we want it to happen. In 1990, 2008, the MPP went to Congress. 17 people participated in the election. And then they lost the election narrowly, as it turned out to be. Some of the MPP people felt that these 17 persons who participated may have been part of the problem because there were 17 opinions about how the country could be governed and the Ghanaian people did not like that. They wanted the monolithic opinion coming from a united party. Look at the NDC. They had Professor Mills and they were running with him. These people have 17. They don't even know who to choose from. Okay, so the conversation was that next time, let's not have 17 people participate. And then they said, some people know that they will not win and yet they will participate. But you can't stop them from doing that because self presentation Observation is the is the first for every human being. So you can't stop 17 people from running for the election. What did they do? They went into their constitution, changed the law, and said that henceforth we are going to have only five people participate. So they are not relying on good men anymore. They are relying on the law. The law says five, so it cannot have 17. We can't say that, oh, people are good or they will be good or we expect them to be good. That's the difference between the narrative that we have been carrying in terms of what Ghana should do and the other narrative, which is looking to catch people who have done wrong. How many can you catch? We shot Kutu Achampong in 1979 for having two toilets. Today, we are talking about ABAJ has taken money from his accounts. Yesterday, we were talking about Kwame Pepra has given money to uh, Rene Cotton. Every, every day, are we going to go on like that? 1970s, that time, 
when I was one year old or so, Kutua Champa was shot dead. General Utuka was shot. Under the regime of the same person who shot them, there were corruption charges. The people who served under Fly Lieutenant Rollins, who shot Kutua Champa and Utuka and Yaobuachi for, for corruption, as it were, under his watch, his ministers were jailed for corruption. That means we did not address the problem. And to address the problem, let us fix the law, the superstructure, the constitution. Let's say this can happen, that cannot happen, this person cannot have so much power. That's the only conversation that we ought to have because we now know that our constitution, which we have, which we have operated for 30 years, which is better than a, a military situation, is yet a constitution that has a deficit because it was styled for a military junta. And so the powers of the leader under the constitution are excessive. And part of that is what is creating the problem that we have. So back to Bwache Jaku, he said, I could for do something, something. That's not what we want to hear. We want to hear what Bwache Jaku is able to do for his party, the MPP. And if he's elected as a president of Ghana, what he's able to do. If you tell us that you don't trust Akufado anymore, Akufado is not on the ballot. He's not on the ballot in 2024. The Ghanaian people have voted for him, giving him a huge landslide in 2016. It is his obligation as Akufado that by the time he's finished his eight-year term, he will make sure that Ghanaians got their time's worth with him as president of Ghana. I believe that will happen. Some people believe that will not happen. We have to wait to see. Posterity will judge. That's his responsibility. That's what he's looking at. He's focused on that. Then you come on radio and say, I don't trust Akufa. So what should we do? If you don't trust him, so, so what? So that's why people should vote for him. They should vote for Boache Jaku because he says, I don't trust Akufa Ado. That's not why we should vote for people. So presidential candidates, NDC and MPP, they should come and tell us what they can do. My guest tonight, Kabne Japan, has gradually and is still doing it position himself as one who wants to speak for the conscience of the political actors he's very concerned about the way politics has become and this thing we're going to talk about is he's very concerned about the whole grab situation young people come from school they become mps they become politicians that's all they do and they make so much money he's very concerned about that he's also concerned about the lack of volunteerism because he comes from that roots where volunteerism was the order of the day. He's concerned about you have people help an election and they want to be paid. And every little bit they want to be paid. Gradually he's positioning himself as Kabne Japan to be the conscience of the political operation. That let's get back to the basics where it was done for the, for, for the philosophy. Where it was done for the belief in it rather than it being done for money. That's his view. He's positioning himself that way. So if you are electing Kabne Japan, you know what you're electing. But should we elect Bwase Jaku because he says, I don't trust Akufu Ado for after 47 years of friendship? That's, that's too basic. We don't want that. So that, that's just my point about, about this Bwase Jaku relating it to how we should change. So we should even be able to adopt a small plan for presidential candidates who want to become president. This is what we want to hear from you. So that if that is the plan, when we have an interview like that with Bwase Jaku, we know that Bwache wants to be president. He's going to speak to us about security. He's going to speak to us about economy. He's going to speak to us about education. He's going to differ from the views of Napo on education. He's going to differ from the views of Alan Chamati on education. Alan Chamati thinks education should go top. Bwache thinks it should go left. That's how we build a society. If you look, watch the American presidential primaries in each of the political parties, they all talk about what they will do about the important things that concerns American people. Security, health, education, and all of that. What is Bwache Jaku's view about free SHS? If he a minister how would he do it if he becomes president does he have a, a philosophy to review free shs what is it how, how is he going to do that how does that differ from dr balmier's philosophy on digital migration or digitization or digitalization how does it differ from joe gatti's uh, views on on legal reform that's what we want to hear so i was quite worried because Bwache is a very intelligent man. He goes on radio and says, I don't trust Akufado after 47 years of relationship. That's not part of the reason why we should elect you. You can say that and say it a hundred times. It's not going to change anything. And I think that if you're seeking election in a party and they, there's a, a sitting president, the last thing you want to do is to go against him because you're going against your party. And that's why I make the point about self-preservation. In 2008, there were NPP people who, because they couldn't see themselves in the future administration of the one who won the Congress, wanted NDC to win the election. It happens both ways. I'm sure that in 2016, there were NDC people who wanted MPP to win. In 2008, there were NPP people. Even after the great work that John Najekum Kufo had done, and everyone expected the MPP to win, there were MPP people who wanted the, the MPP to lose the election because they couldn't see themselves in the administration of Nana Kufo who had won the election. 
Today, some of them are looking for party positions. I shall not mention their names, but we know them. Some of them are looking for party positions in the MPP. These are some of the people who, because of self-preservation and personal interest, did not want their party to win. That always happens. You're going to have it both ways because self-preservation is the same for every human being. But I'm just saying that if you are running on the ticket of the ruling party with the presidential candidate in place, and you, you say, I don't trust him, that's not the reason why we should vote for him.